Hey everyone, 3 d here, here, and within today's video I'm going to be breaking down how to understand the new siege event, main goals and objective, and how to successfully complete it. So this new event that was just released gives us a new area to explore, a new monster to fight, and a whole array of new weapons that are generally reskinned versions of the current weapons we have, but slightly upgraded to have either better or worse stats, but it's definitely an event you don't want to miss out on. So with the event, our main objective is to repel the monster, called Kovo Taroth, who is a new female elder dragon that has appeared and it's up to us and the hunters to find her and repel her as best as possible. Your task with the quest is split into two parts. Firstly, you need to do as much damage to the monster as possible, so you can get the reward points and increase your pursuit level. And then secondly, destroy the monster's horns to overall repel the monster, and complete the quest. Throughout the quest, you'll be working with other four-man teams to complete the same goal as they are, so a lot of teamwork from both sides are going to be needed. Once the team has broke the monster's horn, the siege will end, and it will reset itself all over again. To start this quest, you need to firstly go out in the wild and locate the golden marks or footprints left by the monster. You only need one, so best to go to the ancient forest and search in area 1, as it's much quicker to locate. Then you'll be prompted to go back to Astrea and talk to the Admiral and the team, who will give you a lowdown on what you're fighting and how you're going to deal with it. Once this is over, then head to the gathering hub and go to the lady in red by the quest counter to proceed with doing the quest. In the Siege quest board, you will notice on the right two bits of information present, Pursuit and Rewards. The Pursuit level is an objective that dictates how much time you have, how easy you can break the monster's parts, and how active your scout flies will help you. It grows every time your team or the other team completes tasks, like gathering tracks, breaking the monster's body parts, collecting materials, or going to the next area. They all contribute to the same goal for everyone taking part, so it's advised when you see something shiny on the floor, or any footprints that are left on the ground, that you pick them up as it increases your pursuit levels. It has a max level of 6, and once you hit this level, it will extend how much time you have in missions, make it easier to destroy the monster's body parts, and longer use of your scout flights. The reward objective is the same as pursuit objectives, where it's accumulated over time with completing some of the main research areas that you're given to complete as much as possible. Every time you or your teammates complete a task, such as destroying the monster's body parts, advancing to the next staging area, breaking his horns, or using the environment, etc., you'll gain points. And at the end of the quest screen, it will tell you how much you accumulated within that mission. These will then be converted into reward levels, which, once the mission is over, you can then go and use these for the end rewards, but these all depend on your current level you're at. Also, every time your teammates from our groups that are taking part in the series complete your objective, they gain points for everyone taking part. But, you'll only receive half of it if you're not in that four-man group. In your own group, if you complete the same objective as them, then you'll receive the whole points, while the other groups around you will receive half of it, and so forth. The max level for this is 17, and the higher you are, the better the war outcome will be. For example, hitting level 15, 16 gives you a higher chance to get ready 7 or 8 weapons, but any lower, your chances to get them are decreased, to get in rarity 6 or just 7 weapons. Now as a failsafe for the event, if you get kicked from the server, or if you leave the lobby before the siege ends, you'll still get your rewards, but you'll only be at the current level you're at, which is a very nice addition for the event, as not many people will have good circumstances on their sides. Now once you have the main zest of things, you can then go ahead and pick the mission like shown. When you first start, you'll be at level 1 pursuit level, so you won't be breaking a lot of the monsters body parts, but can water down easily, and still push through the mission like normal. Before you head out, there are a few key things you should bring with you first. Firstly, bring some bow bombs with you, as they can be helpful for doing extra damage on the monster once she's down or asleep. Next, bring some life powder, attack and defense powder with you, as they can help increase the survival chances of your team by tenfold. And lastly, bring some sleep herbs with you, so you can share them with your LBG or HBG teammates. Now you're probably wondering why bring that to them. Well, for starters, Colby takes a lot of damage when she's asleep, specifically around the head area. And if you were a competent team, you could put her to sleep multiple times in sleep bomber until you chip her horns, or until she's released from her outer shell, which will majorly help with taking her down in the final stage. But this does vary on the user and what weapon they're using. I don't recommend using this in randoms, but if you're with a team that you know you've played with before, and they generally know what you're going to be doing, it's always recommended to bring the specific item with you. Also, before you head out, make sure you eat something before you go, and do bring with you some rations or max potions in case you get carted. Now, when it comes down to facing her, any weapon is viable against her, 
as all you need to do is break down her golden shell until she's released from it. Then you have your final task of breaking the horn to successfully repel her. It's also recommended you use the heartbreaker skill in your build so you and your team can break her body parts much more efficiently rather than go all out and see no end results. Now this fight won't be done in one run, even though it can be done. But for most groups it will be split into two runs, and sometimes three, with the second run being the higher chance to break a horn of completing siege as a whole. There are a total of four areas that she'll walk through, and each area will have either environmental hazards or hunter tools, such as cannons or bombs that can be used to work down our defences. Remember, your objective is to damage her defences as much as possible, and not completely break her horns, or else you'll receive low rewards. Make use of everything you have, as this can provide you large damage when needed, to cause the monster to stumble and be runnable for a few seconds. At the same time, be sure to collect as much item drops, footprint scales, etc. as well, as they all contribute to everyone taking part within the event. And you can also gain a rare gem from the monster that is needed for creating a few of our armor sets. Now within the next section, I'm going to be breaking down her runs into two sections. The first phase run you'll do is where you'll build up your points and gain the pursuit levels. And then the second phase run, you'll be damaging her to the point of releasing her from her armor and then going into the fourth zone with her for the final face off. For the first phase run, within the first area she'll be casually walking around and mind her own business. You want to come in and start damaging her as best as you can until she makes a run for it. Or leads into the second area. She will fight back every now and then with a tail swing that can send you flying but you can dodge this easily as it has a big wind up to it. Make use of the cannons and environmental hazards around you as they can damage her and leave her open for you. At the same time make use of the bombs near the cannons as much as you can as they can provide extra firepower and can place in her pathway so you can detonate them easily when attacking. Once she enters the second area she will start to be aggressive and start to attack you more by using fire attacks, rolling moves on body slams. Do your best to avoid them while attacking and damaging her, while at the same time be sure to collect the materials off the ground as well. She will in some cases enrage, to which we heat up a shell. Make use of this, as this will increase the amount of damage you do to her, and using elementals that she's weak to can make cracking her shell a whole lot faster in some cases. In some cases, you and your team may manage to crack her shell off of her horns, which is a step in the right direction as once that's off, you then need to focus on chipping her horns, but this may not be an easy case when you're in pursuit level 1. Once she's taken enough damage, she'll then move on to the third area, where she'll still be aggressive with you, but will gain the ability to do a fire AoE attack that can potentially kill you within a few seconds if you don't get out of it quickly enough. In this area, there are environment hazards that can be used to damage her, golden coat, and her horns such as falling boulders and lava pits that spew damaging lava. Make use of them as they can speed up the damaging process needed to get her into the final phase. Carry on damaging her until you receive a notification telling you she will be leaving the locale soon. This indicates you've done your job and there's not much left for you to do, so do what you can and collect anything that needs to be picked up before she leaves. Now as a heads up, if the monster flees or if your team all wipes then it doesn't mean you have failed as you still gain the points accumulated over time. Plus, even if you don't complete your objective, it only takes one team to complete the main goal of breaking the monster's horns and thus everyone will receive their rewards whether you completed it successfully or not. Now depending on what pursuit level you're at after your first phase, let's say 3, you'll be able to redo it again but this time you should have a longer time in the mission, a slightly easier time to break the monster's parts and easier scout flight tracking. So now go in and redo the siege again and do everything you did in the first phase. You'll notice that destroying the monster's part is a lot easier now thanks to increasing your pursuit level. Destroy everything on the monster as much as possible and once she's in the second area start to focus on the horns and chest and try to damage and chip them if you can. If you can't chip them then you can do that in the third area using the pillars and lava pits. Now once you have managed to chip all horns and crack the chest shell she will then be released and will move straight to the fourth area. Here she will make a final stand until she flees if not enough damage is done to her or until you break her horns completely. Everyone at this point should be either switching weapons or heading into the same area as her and focus on destroying her horns. As a heads up, in the final area she's a lot more fast and aggressive than normal and we use her fire attack a lot more to catch you off guard. Here's a little tip. For every time she uses her AoE attack, use her slinger ammo and aim at her head and this will damage her horns but also knock her out as well. Also use the middle pillar to do jump attacks and mountain techniques to shorten her time for moving around a lot. 
Now, break our horns and you have completed the event successfully and earned your rewards. Make sure you carve up the horns on the ground as they both give you two smelter weapons or horns that can unravel back at the gathering hall. And that's generally it. I hope this video provided all the information you need to know about how to complete the event and some general tips and main basics to complete the event whether you want to do this in groups or whether you want to be a bit more challenging and do this in solo. If there's anything you're confused with or there's something I may have missed out or there's something you just want to know more about do leave a comment in the comment section and I'll try my best to help you out as best as possible. Also this might sound quite bad but also do subscribe and leave a like if this was helpful to you as I do enjoy doing these type of videos and I do plan on doing these videos as much as possible to help all newer players and veteran players lives much more easier in game. But once again everyone thank you for watching and I do hope to see you all again soon.